Welcome back into a Weather Nation. Meteorologist Patrick Crawford here as we are looking at more of the images coming out of Buffalo, New York. This was on Monday. They were out there surveying for people who needed help. A lot of people needed help from this historic system and this event. And we actually want to talk to somebody there locally in Buffalo, New York. Right now we're joined by Bob Hamilton, a meteorologist there at the National Weather Service office in Buffalo. Bob, we really appreciate you joining us here on Weather Nation. And can you talk about this event and how historic it was there for Western New York? Well, Buffalo isn't uh... We're not strangers to heavy snows. Typically, the city will get a snowstorm, one to two foot snowstorm every three or four years. So we're we're not strangers to getting heavy snow, and we typically get uh, more high wind events than most areas. So we're used to getting 60 to 70 mile an hour winds. But the issue with this event was that we had both at the same time. Uh, as you probably know, there was an intense area uh, of low pressure that passed to our west, set some low pressure records in eastern Canada. And as it went through, you had an extremely strong uh, 75 to 80 knot low level jet. A lot of that wind was able to make it to the ground and that produced the blizzard conditions when you combine that with the snow that fell. And when you're looking back at the amount of snow that fell, can you talk about just how much, uh, especially Western New York there, Buffalo area, how much snow was received from this event? Well, most areas picked up a, a foot or two, but right at the airport where the weather office is located, and it lines up pretty much right with the city, they were looking at four feet plus of snow. So uh, historic in many cases, this was uh, the third highest um, amount of snow in a two day period and also the third highest on record over a three day period. Typically when we get the really big events like we had back in November and we had in, in November uh, five or six years ago, uh, that heavy snow usually lines up just south of the city. And in this case, it lined up right over the city out to the airport. And we had officially at 51 inches and counting uh, we're going to get a little more of that band as it lifts back up across the area this afternoon, probably another inch or so. So the official number isn't there yet. And I'm curious the forecast for later this week. You've already got so much snow there on the ground, but it looks like temperatures, they're actually going to be on the incline. They're going to surge. Can you talk about the threat for the snow melt? Is that a threat that you're monitoring out there in western New York? Well, there's two to four inches of water locked up in the snowpack, and we are going to see temperatures well into the 40s by Thursday and then in the, in the 50s for Friday and Saturday. So uh, that snow is going to have to ripen up first before it really starts to melt. So during the weekend, we'll see some pretty good rises on the local tributaries. Um, it's a non-zero threat for flooding, so there is the chance, but right now that is a minimal chance. Uh, there is some ice on the area tributaries. A lot of that isn't real thick. So we're kind of hoping that things don't melt off too fast. Uh, some of that would be exacerbated by the system. It's going to move through the area and give us a little rain. Right now that rain doesn't look excessive. So hopefully this will be somewhat of an organized uh, meltdown. And so that's what you're looking at when we're looking at an event like this and the snow melt, uh, you want it to be a very slow process. Is that is that's what you're saying? You, it's when it melts so quickly, that's when it creates the hazards. Well, when it when it melts quickly and you get uh, an inch or two of rain on top of that to help things. But like I said, it's going to take a day or two for the snow to ripen up and then it can start to actually melt. One thing you want to look for is to get dew points well above the freezing mark. You can have temperatures at the low to mid 40s, but if your dew points are in the 20s, it doesn't efficiently melt like it would if you had dew points above 32. Very interesting information that we really appreciate it. Bob Hamilton, meteorologist there at the National Weather Service office in Buffalo. Bob, thank you so much for joining us here on Weather Nation.